Hello all. Welcome to the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert Part 4. In this video, we will understand a little bit about the organization of the Metasploit Framework. So this video series is part of the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert course and certification, which is an entirely online certification, which you can join anytime. For more details, have a look at securitytube.net slash SMFE. Our certifications are currently taken by students in over 30 plus countries around the world. This video is provided free of charge to everyone as part of Security Tube's vision and mission to provide free InfoSec education. So, however, if you'd like a certification on Metasploit, please feel free to subscribe to the course certification and the labs. Okay, <clears throat> so in the last video, we saw about Metapreter and we'll come back to that a bit later. Before that, so I showed you how to access Metasploit using the terminal program MSF console. However, there are other ways with which you can uh, go ahead and access Metasploit as well. These include MSF GUI, MSF Web, MSF CLI, MSF D, MSF console of course, and Armitage. You've already seen a video series about Armitage from Rafael Maj, the person who created the tool. Uh, for our purpose in this entire uh, video series on SMFE, we are going to go ahead and use the MSF console for most of the part. So how is Metasploit really organized? Well, you have a ton of stuff in there. We'll look at more details on the architecture as we dig deeper into various aspects of Metasploit. For the time being, what you need to understand is the architecture is modular, it's open source, and this allows you to create your own modules, uh, create your own scripts, and a ton of other interesting things in Metasploit. So console basics, well, you've already used MSF console, you've logged in and done a ton of stuff. Now let's actually explore the Metasploit directory a little bit more, right? So let's go to our virtual machine. To go to the Metasploit directory on backtrack 5R1, which is basically in pen test, exploits, and framework, right? So when you do an ls, you see a bunch of directories and scripts. The modules directory is what contains all the different modules. Now, we used auxiliary modules uh, for port scanning and a couple of exploit modules, right? We'll come to more details on modules a bit later. Now, the other interesting directory is external. And this contains a lot of external libraries and other things used by Metasploit. Then you have data, which contains a lot of other helper modules. Uh, for example, word lists actually contains different word lists you can use with various modules or otherwise in Metasploit. Uh, Metapreter actually contains all the DLLs and other interesting thing uh, which is typically required to enable Metapreter functionality post-exploitation, right? So as an example, you have different DLLs which you can use even the Java version, the PHP version, etc. of Metapreter, right? <clears throat> then, uh, one of the other interesting directories is actually scripts. These typically contain a lot of scripts used by Metasploit, the most important of which are Metapreter scripts. Now, the point to note is that Metapreter scripts are being phased out uh, and what is the recommended use is something called post-exploitation modules, right? Which is something we'll look at a bit later. Uh, however, these scripts are something we'll 
take a look at in a later video. Apart from scripts, another interesting place is the tools directory. This has a bunch of interesting tools, uh, pattern, create and offset. The two tools here is something which is extensively used in exploit research. And then finally, you also have the plugins directory. And this contains plugins typically uh, to integrate third party tools with Metasploit, right? As an example, you have the Nessus plugin, the Nextpost plugin, uh, the WMAP plugin, right? And a bunch of others. So we'll take up all of uh, these different scripts and plugins and all of that in separate videos. Basically, what you need to do is just get yourself familiarized with what the directory structure looks like, what are the different things out there, right? Uh, now you also see some other scripts, for example, couple of them we touched upon, uh, which was MSF GUI, then you have MSFD, MSF console. These were different ways with which you could access Metasploit, right? MSF CLI and all of that. Then you have a bunch of tools which are like helper scripts with Metasploit. We will look at a couple of them uh, in later videos. One important one if you want to update Metasploit is called MSF update, right? This is something you can use as well. <clears throat> just typing in MSF update should update your Metasploit framework with the latest and greatest out there. Okay, so now that we've looked at the directory structure, let's look at exploit modules in more detail. So if you go into modules and then exploits, what you would find is that these exploits have been categorized by operating system. If you go into Windows, it is further categorized typically by the service name. So if you remember, we had looked at a lot of SMB vulnerabilities. So let's look at SMB. And inside that, you would find a ton of stuff, including a couple which we have touched, for example, the MS08 underscore 67, the net API exploit. And <coughs> sorry, you could open up this script as well. The best part is because it's written in Ruby, it's open source. Well, practically, you know exactly how it works, right? Of course, you would have to have a knowledge of exploit research to fully understand the inner workings, no doubt. Now, this is how the exploits directory looks like. Uh, inside modules. Then you also have auxiliary modules like the one we use for port scanning. So if you do an ls here, you should see auxiliary. There we go. And here, typically this is categorized by functionality. So as an example, if you want to look at all scanner auxiliary modules, go into scanner, go further into port scan, and then what we had probably used was tcp.rb. This was the simple TCP connect scan, which we had used in a previous video, right? So auxiliary modules are basically modules which typically get used uh, in information gathering and a lot of other interesting stuff. Typically something which does not exploit, right? Actively exploit uh, all your DOS is, is typically auxiliary modules as well. If you go back to the presentation. The other modules are payloads. So payloads are interesting as well. This is something we've used in the previous video, which is what runs after an exploit succeeds. Now payloads, you would actually find three different kinds of payloads single stager and stages so let's understand what these are singles are actually self-contained payloads for specific tasks now this is basically if you want to just do one task post exploitation like adding a user similar to what we did uh, with the windows add user exploit basically the whole idea is this is self-contained right so let me go into singles 
<coughs> sorry and then inside that of course payloads are specific uh, two operating systems and if you notice here is our add user payload right entirely self-contained and basically uh, what this actually does is runs this command cmd right the whole net user stuff add net local group administrators right fantastic so now you even know how it works internally right so singles are self-contained payloads the next thing which you would actually find is if you go back to the ppt stagers now imagine that if you have a payload of a very large size right probably you want to do a lot of interesting activities uh, post exploitation right uh, let's say you want a command shell on a specific port or you want to run matter predator which is a very powerful payload now in order to do that you probably cannot fit the entire matter predator dll into that one payload and this is where we break up the whole process into two parts. The first is a much more smaller payload called stagers. What happens is this is something which executes on the victim and creates a network connection back to the attacker machine. Now over this network connection, a larger payload is transported, right? And that larger payload is basically your stages, which could be the actual matter predator DLL, or something larger so the analogy I can give you is imagine that basically the attacker has an army of tanks which want to cross over a cliff right the cliff is what separates the victim and the attacker uh, and between these two large cliffs the idea is to first build a bridge right that bridge is the stagers which allow network connectivity between the attacker and the victim and then when you transport your tanks and all of those big ships on that bridge to the other side, that is what is the stages or the larger payloads, right? So hope the differentiation is understood. Now, if I were to look at stagers, basically what you would find is different ways in which you could establish network connectivity, right? So for example, you have bind TCP, which is the regular bind to a TCP port. You have reverse TCP, which is nothing but connect back. The victim connects back to you on a specific port. Uh, similarly, you have reverse TCP all ports, reverse HTTP, HTTPS, and a ton of other things. So the whole idea with stagers is to create a bridge between the victim and the attacker to transport larger and more powerful payloads which is all there in the stages directory. Sorry. Right. Now this contains things like your matter predator payload and stuff like that. For example, the shell uh, payload, which is there. So this is how actually it looks like, right? The larger payload here, or just the transportation of the matter predator DLL, which is uh, something we pick up from the data directory and send it across to the victim to be loaded uh, in the running processes memory using reflective injection for DLLs. Right? So this is how the different payloads and all of that uh, exist in Metasploit. You also have a bunch of other modules, uh, nopes and encoders. This we will take up when we look at exploit research in more detail. The post modules is something, as we mentioned earlier, is what is going to replace Metapreter scripts, right? So basically inside the post module directory, you should ideally be able to find uh, all of the scripts rewritten uh, as a module with the same functionality as the existing Metapreter script. And of course, this is the way forward. And I think at a later version of Metasploit, probably Metapreter scripts uh, would even be completely discontinued, right? So if you want to write newer stuff, try and use post-exploitation modules for it, 
right? Okay, fantastic. So that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave your comments and feedback behind and I look forward to see you in the next video. Thank you.